sir. Good to have you with us once again. From Ocala, Florida. God bless you, Brother Wade Bass. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. I think there's more folks here than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Ah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Amen. Isn't it great to be in church on Tuesday night? My daddy was here. He would say, I'd rather be here than the best hospital in the whole world. And that's, I think you probably heard him say that. But we're so delighted to be here again tonight. I was uh, thinking a few moments ago about uh, how that there are what they call, or what there is what is called the power of unrelated things. You have seed and soil, sunshine and water. All four of those, they are completely unrelated to one another. But when you put the seed in the soil and you put water on the soil and you let the sun shine on it, things begin to grow and you have a harvest. And I mean, I'm talking about turnip greens on the table and black eyed peas and all them wonderful things amen it's because it's because there is a power when unrelated things get together something begins to happen and I thought about walking into the house of worship tonight and all these unrelated things here tonight you got a building and you got people and you got music you got a sound system. You got all of that. They're all unrelated to one another, but when you start putting folks in the house and you start the music and people start singing and they start worshiping, something starts happening. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm right here tonight in the middle of what God is doing in 2016. Ain't nobody glad you got the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. And I, I, I am told, and I don't have the names of them in front of me, but I am told that there are three metals in the world that separate and apart from one another. They have no power of magnetism. But when you combine the three of them in the proper amount of metal in each one, they form the strongest magnet in the entire earth. Amen. So I'm just telling you, by ourselves, we're not a whole lot. But when we all start getting together, hallelujah, I say when we all start getting together, I do believe that we can form a spirit of magnetism that we can draw people into the house of God. I believe in outreach, but I also believe in indraw. Hallelujah. Ah, let's clap our hands and praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're delighted to be here again tonight and also to have the wonderful privilege to be the first guest preacher behind this beautiful new pulpit. Amen. Bishop, if you're watching, I beat you to it. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't know if he's looking in tonight or not, but if he is, I just want him to know I beat him to it. Amen. I'll have it broke in by the time you get back. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. So, so happy to be back with your pastor and his wife. We had a wonderful time of fellowship on Saturday. And... Uh, we love the Heyman family, all, of, all the Heyman family we've met. Now, there might be some of them we haven't met that we might not like, but so far, all of them I've met, I like. Amen. That'd be true of my family, too. There'd be a few of my family you might not like. But uh, nevertheless, anyway, we're happy, so happy to have this privilege to be here. And I want to direct your attention tonight to the Song of Solomon, chapter number five. I have carried the burden of this message for this service tonight for several days. And I want to try to give to you what I feel 
that the Holy Ghost has put in my heart for this service. Amen. We're all trying to make it. I say we're all trying to make it. I have no interest in being lost. I have no interest in, miss, in, no interest in missing the rapture. My focus is on God and, go, and being with him for eternity. So whatever it takes, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not standing around trying to figure out how I can get by with some things and still make the rapture. I want to do what I can do to please God. Amen. Amen. Everything I do where living for God is concerned, I don't reduce it to a heaven or hell issue. No more than I do my relationship with my wife. Amen. The way I treat her and our marriage relationship, it's not based on whether or not it's going to keep me out of a divorce court. Amen. I do a lot of things just because I love her. Just because I love her. And there's some things I don't do just because I love her. Amen. I might try to hang up my clothes. I try to pick them up off the floor, hang them up, put them in the right place. I try to put my shoes in the right place. If I don't, she's not going to divorce me. Amen. But I'll tell you what, if I do, it sure does make things a whole lot sweeter. Woo, yes, Lord, hallelujah. Feeling like Brother Ballestero right now. Amen. Anybody understand what I'm saying tonight? Living for God can't be just heaven or hell. Living for God's got to be about the relationship that you have with him. And I'm glad I've got a relationship with God tonight. Amen. Song of Solomon chapter 5 verse number 1. I am coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink. Yea, drink abundantly, O oh beloved. I sleep, but my heart wakes. It is the voice of my beloved that knocks, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. I have put off my coat. How shall I put it on? I have washed my feet. And how shall I defile them? From verse number two, this one that is considered to be the beloved, she says, I sleep, but my heart wakes. And I want to preach a few minutes here tonight on this thought, my heart wakes. Amen. My heart wakes. Ask the Lord one more time to touch our hearts tonight. Amen. To help us in the word of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. How I love you, holy God. How I worship you, holy God. How I praise you. And everybody shout amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. I'm sure... For those that have been in church uh, for many, many years, you understand that the Song of Solomon is a very beautiful love story. And oftentimes when people are reading the Song of Solomon, they find it hard to understand simply because the narration moves so quickly between the two main characters. And I understand there are more characters in the Song of Solomon than two, but there are two main characters. And so consequently, sometimes it's hard to keep up with who is saying what about whom. Amen. It's hard to follow the narration. But nevertheless, when you study it in its fullness, then you see it as a story about the beloved and the one that he loves. And so it is, I believe tonight, in reality, a type of Jesus Christ and his church. 
Amen. And there are many types used in scripture that describe the relationship that Jesus has with his church. But there is none greater than the intense love affair that we find in the book of the Song of Solomon. Thank God that we have a God that you and I can trust and that we can love. Hallelujah. I'm glad we can have an intimate relationship with our God. I'm glad we can know him in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm glad we can know him in his tenderness and in his kindness. Amen. I'm glad we can know the God that we serve in a very pure and a very holy manner. I love the Lord I serve tonight. Amen. And I want to please him. Is that how you feel tonight? I want to please the God that I serve. And so it is that we understand tonight that sleep for the natural human body is vital and it is very important. We understand that sleep is a time of restoration. I am not going to deny that fact tonight. I am not going to try uh, to ignore that fact. I, be, I do know that sleep is important and it is necessary. However, whenever you study the word, you're going to find that sleep in scripture is often described as a condition that robs a man or a woman of some very important things in life. And the reason is that it is used to describe a man, an individual who has ceased from being productive to one who is lazy and called a sluggard. When you study Proverbs chapter 6, starting with verse number 9, he said, How long will you sleep, O sluggard? When will you arise out of sleep? Yet a little sleep and a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. When you move to chapter 19 and verse number 15, he said, Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. And then one final verse in chapter 20 and verse 13, he said, Love not sleep, lest you come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and you shall be satisfied with bread. And so again, while we understand that for the human body, sleep is important, yet we understand from a spiritual perspective that one of the most dangerous places that we can get in in our walk with God is a state of sleep and a state of slumber. Amen. I, I want to grow in God. I want to progress in God. I want to be productive in God. I don't want to be poverty stricken where the things of the spirit are concerned. By the word of the Lord tells us that our God is able to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Our God is an awesome God and he has everything that we have need of. But I am convinced tonight that in order for us to tap into those things that he would desire to give, the demand is that we arise and that we become fully aware in our spiritual mind and our spiritual heart and be able to tap into the revival God wants to give to us. I don't want to be sleeping in 2016. I don't want to be sleeping in this last day. I want to be aware. I want to be awake. I want to know. I want to know. The Apostle Peter said that we should be sober and we should be vigilant. For our adversary, the devil, goeth about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So there's a twofold reason to stay awake. Number one, you got an enemy that's targeting your life. 
But number two, you've got a God that loves you, that desires to bless you, that desires to do great things in your life. Can you clap your hands and praise him right now? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And so it is that what we find in verse number one is we find the beloved speaking about the time of banqueting. It's a time when uh, there are good things going on. He talks about the myrrh with the spice. He talks about the honeycomb with the honey and the wine with the milk. And then he bids everybody to drink and drink abundantly. Our God tonight is not chinchy he is not cheap amen he oh praise the lord our god doesn't squeak when he walks our god is liberal tonight with his blessings he's liberal tonight with his love he's liberal tonight with his great grace oh hallelujah our god tonight wants to do more than what we even can imagine in our mind that he can do I feel Holy Ghost in this house. How many is going to help me here tonight? Amen. He's inviting us to drink abundantly. He's inviting us, amen, to the table of banqueting. I do not believe that in 2016 that it's time to roll up the carpet, pack the suitcases, and find us a corner somewhere and just do nothing more than try to survive. I am convinced that God's got greater things in this last hour. Hallelujah. I don't care what others are saying. I don't care what others are doing. They can walk away from this great truth. They can turn toward the world. But that's not the answer. Our God has great blessings. Our God has great revival. Our God has prepared the table. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if he's inviting me to come and dine, I'm taking him up on the invitation. Woo! I said, I'm taking him up on the invitation. If he's got revival waiting, I'm going to go for it. If he's got miracles waiting, I'm going to go for them. If he's got blessings waiting, I'm going to go for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, Calvary. I feel something in the Holy Ghost here tonight. Amen. Amen. And so what I see is him inviting all to come and to drink abundantly. But then you notice that in verse number two, the one that is loved, she says, I sleep but my heart wakes. It's the voice of my beloved that knocks, saying, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. She says, I have put off my coat. Amen. How shall I put it on? I have washed my feet how shall I defile them? It appears that the one that is loved, who is likewise invited to the banquet, invited to the abundance of the blessings that the beloved is offering, she is saying, I sleep, but my heart wakes. Amen. I hear the voice of my beloved. I hear the call of my beloved. Open up to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. But her response was, I put off my coat, and how shall I put it on? I have washed my feet, and how shall I defile them? You know what she was saying? She was saying, I'm sorry, but it's just going to take too much trouble to get up from where I am and go answer the door. 
It's going to cost me too much. I'm comfortable. I'm happy where I am. I'm in the bed. I've got my feet washed. I put my coat off. And I don't even know if it's really worth the effort to get up to where I am from where I am and open the door. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. I don't know if I can open the door or not. It's really too much trouble. Amen. I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm comfortable in the place where I am. But I got to tell you tonight, church, that it wasn't always this way with this one that was loved. Because when you go back two chapters, to chapter three and verse number one, I want you to hear what she said then. She said, by night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. I will rise now and go about the city and the streets and in the broad ways I will seek him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. She said, the watchmen that go about the city found me to whom I said, have you seen the one that my soul loves? Somebody tell me where the one that I love is at. I'm seeking for him. She said, it was but a little while that I passed from them, but I found him who my soul loveth. I held him and I would not let him go until I brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. It wasn't always this way. It wasn't always that I put my coat off and I washed my feet. There was a time that she said, I gotta find him. I gotta find the one my soul loves. I've gotta pursue until I locate him. I couldn't find him in my bed. I couldn't find him in the streets. I couldn't find him in the broad ways. I looked and talked to the watchman and they didn't know where he was. But when I found him, when I found the one that my soul loves, I made my mind up. I'm going to get a hold of him and I'm not going to turn him loose. I'm not going to let him go. I'm going to take him home with me. I'm going to take him home with me. Oh, I feel something happening in the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody shout praise the Lord. The writer of Hebrews in 10 and 32 says, but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions, partly while you were made a gazing stock by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while you became companions of them that were so used. The writer of Hebrews is saying, don't you remember? Don't you remember while back there? Don't you remember the former days? Don't you remember when you were first illuminated? Can I preach to you a few minutes here tonight? Can you remember when you first got the revelation that there was only one God? Can you remember when you first heard Acts 2.38? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Do you remember when you were out there in a drunken stupor and something deep down inside of you said, this is not my answer. This is not what I'm looking for. I need something. I believe I need God. And you went looking for God. You went looking for an experience you look we're looking for something that would change you you were looking for something that would turn your life around amen amen and there might be those tonight sitting in this house 
that you might say, well, I never smoked. I never drank. I was raised in church. Oh, yeah, I understand that. I likewise was raised in church. I cut my teeth on the back of church pews. But I'm going to tell you, friend, I still remember at six years old when I went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. Hallelujah. I still remember at 12 years old standing in a youth camp and the power of God hit my body and my spirit and I found myself all the way across the building talking in tongues for the very first time. Hallelujah. I've never forgot it and I don't ever want to forget it. I don't ever want to forget it. I don't want to get so used to this that it's old hat. Come on, I want the freshness of the Holy Ghost every day, every week, every month, every year. I want the freshness of the Spirit to be alive within my heart. Remember when? I say, remember when? Remember when? You first got the Holy Ghost. Remember when you were first illuminated. Remember when you endured a great fight of afflictions. Remember when you first got in church and all hell broke loose in your life and the devil tried to do everything he could to trip you up and destroy your newfound faith in God. Do you remember that? Anybody in the house remember that? Anybody remember when the, when the, when the hounds of hell, amen, were dogging your trail, breathing down your neck, telling you that you'll never make it. You'll never survive. You'll never live for God. You don't have what it takes. Hallelujah. Don't you remember when your family turned against you? Don't you remember when your co-workers mocked you and made fun of you? But you didn't care. You couldn't wait to get back to church. You couldn't wait to get back in the sanctuary. You couldn't wait to get back to a prayer meeting. You couldn't wait till the music started because you wanted to dance again. You wanted to shout again you want to praise God again I think we'll just take time to praise him right now somebody praise him for the Holy Ghost amen 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 Hallelujah. When I know it might be Tuesday night, but I feel like the Holy Ghost would like to do something in this house tonight. I feel like the Holy Ghost would like to challenge somebody to remember that this business of living for God doesn't have to get old. It doesn't have to get stale. It doesn't have to get stagnant. You don't have to be paralyzed. Oh, hallelujah. But there can be a fire. I said a Holy Ghost fire that's down in your spirit that causes you when you come to the house of God to one more time say, I just can't say it enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't stop praising this name. I can't stop praising this name. I can't stop praising this name. Come on now. Hallelujah. I can't stop praising him. I can't stop loving him. When it all began, I said when it all began, it was because you loved him. Amen. I said because you loved him. I sought him whom my soul loved. I sought him whom my soul loved. When you got in this, it was because you loved God. 
Amen. You know what I fear is that after a while we merely start going through the motions. Amen. Because we don't want to go to hell. Amen. We don't want to be lost. I got to tell you tonight the way to keep this thing fresh in your heart is to stay in love with him. To love his word. To love his church. To love his spirit. To love to worship. To love to live for God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I don't want to just come to church because I don't want to be lost. Hallelujah. I don't want to come to church just because I don't want to go to hell. I know it's right. I know it's right to be in church. I'm going to be in church because I don't want to be, I don't want to be lost. I don't want to go to hell. That's not why I want to be here. Amen. Listen, church, I've been preaching this wonderful gospel for over 46 years, and I don't say that as a boast tonight, but I'm going to tell you I refuse. I refuse to take on an attitude that I'm just going to somehow get into the motion of living for God and somehow make it. Oh no, I gotta have this thing real. I gotta have this thing alive. I gotta have this thing burning down in my spirit. Anybody feel that way tonight? We have any Holy Ghost apostolics in the house that feel that way. I wanna be alive. I wanna be awake. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Many years ago, and I guess this was probably back, I would say my son was 16, so it would be somewhere around 1988 that I was in the prayer room one night praying. And I was praying for revival, praying for God to do great things. And, and, I, and I, we were in, it was a side room off from the church. It was dark in there. The, the, the door was just ajar enough to let, let a little light come in. And I'm praying and I'm calling up, God, we've got to have a move of your spirit. God, we've got to have the glory in the house. And, and while I'm praying, I'm saying, God, I don't even know why I keep praying for revival the way I do and the move of your spirit. And about that time, the door opened up and that light from the hallway caught the white hairs of an elder gentleman in our church. And when he walked in that door and I saw his white hair glistening in the beam of light, I pointed at him in prayer and I said, God, that's one of the reasons right there that I want revival in the hour that I'm living in. Because I don't want the old timers to die and get on the other side and say, Lord, it ain't like it used to be. It's not like it once was. Oh, they still having church but it ain't I said God when they get on the other side I want them to say Lord they haven't church down there like I had it the night I got the Holy Ghost hallelujah they haven't church down there like the night that I prayed through they haven't church just like they used to 50 years ago Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I kept praying. I said, I kept praying. And I kept saying, God, I don't want them to die in a dead Pentecostal church. I don't want them to die in a dried up Pentecostal church. I want them to die in one full of revival, full of the move of the spirit, full of the glory of God. Hallelujah. And then, and then, a few minutes later, the door opened again. And this time, that shaft of light caught, amen, the profile of my 16-year-old son. And I said, 
God, that's the other reason why that I'm contending for revival because I refuse to pass on a dead Pentecostal church to the next generation. Woo! Come on. I refuse to pass off a dry apostolic church to the next generation. God, I know what revival is. I want them to know what revival is. I need some praisers right now. I need somebody to shout aloud. I need somebody to glorify God right now. Woo! Yes! Yes! Hallelujah. No, no, no. And now, I said now. I said now. I've lived long enough. Glory to God. That God's blessed me with 10 grandchildren. One that's already graduated to the other side. Hallelujah. He's already shouting on the hills of glory. He left a platform shouting and all he did was just change platforms. He just changed locations. And I got a word for you tonight. I want my grandchildren. I want my grandchildren to know God like my children have and like I did and like my parents did. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Calvary. We don't have time to play games. We don't have time to fool around. There's another generation counting on you. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Ain't nothing wrong with praising God just for a few moments. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you something. And this the Lord, I feel like, impressed me with this not very long ago. And that is that sinners walk in our doors and they never heard the lyrics to our songs. Amen. They've never heard the music that is anointed of the Holy Ghost. And when they walk in the door, they're moved just by the songs and the lyrics. They're moved by the atmosphere that's in the house. Can I get a witness, church? Hallelujah. They're affected by that. But you've got to hear this preacher. Our children that, that have come week after week, month after month, and year after year, they've heard the same songs, and they've seen the same lyrics, and they could sing it by heart. It's nothing more than rote to worship. Oh, there's only one thing, only one thing that's going to save our children. It's going to be the power, the power, the glory, the anointing, the... Hallelujah. The only thing that's going to save them is when we come here and there's more drawing them to the altar than out there drawing them to the world. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus cleansed the temple. And when he got done cleansing the temple, it said the halt and the lame and the blind came in and he healed them. And then the next thing it said, the children were in the temple crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. 
and there was a bunch of folks came and said, do you hear that? And he said, let me tell you, have you ever read that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, praise would be perfected? Ah, help me here tonight. Amen. These are not things I came with. They're just some things that the Holy Ghost is prompting me right now. Amen. I'm going to tell you, and I love, I love, I enjoyed the singing tonight by the praise group, the worship singers. But I want to tell you who is going to perfect praise in the house. It's when our children are talking in tongues. It's when our children are weeping, weeping in the altars, reaching out to God, praying for the Holy Ghost. You want to know when you're having revival? It's when the children are getting the Holy Ghost. Help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. This is what I preached at home. This is what I preached when I was a pastor. Amen. I'm telling you again. When you know you're having real revival, it's when your babies are getting the Holy Ghost. When your babies are talking in tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. Hezekiah was told by God, there's going to be great war. There's going to be great problems in Israel. But it won't be while you're alive. It'll be in your son's lives. As long as you live, there'll be peace. But in your son's life, there's going to be great war. You know what Hezekiah said? And I cringe when I read it. He said, as long as there's peace in my time. He had no concern about what his boys were gonna have to deal with, what the next generation was gonna have to deal with. Let me tell you why I contend, why I contend for revival, why I contend for the move of the spirit. It's because the next generation, they're gonna fight battles that some of us have never fought. They're gonna deal with spirits that some of us have never dealt with. And they're gonna need the power. They're gonna need the glory. They're gonna need the help of God. Hallelujah. Come on, let, come on, let's let something happen here tonight. Let something wake us up. Come on, let's don't just sit on the sideline to say as long as I as long as I've got the Holy Ghost. As long as I've been able to make it, then it's okay. No, no, no. You got some babies following after you. You got some teenagers following after you. Oh God. Hallelujah. They need a pattern for worship. They need a pattern for prayer. They need a pattern for praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I wish I could continue in this vein, but I've got to move on just a little bit further. You be seated. Hallelujah. Sleep, church. Listen to this preacher here tonight. Sleep is a state of danger because you're more vulnerable when you're asleep than you are when you're awake. When you're, a, when, when you're aware of your surroundings, when you're aware of what's going on, amen, you're not quite as vulnerable, but when you're asleep, that's your most vulnerable time. And I find some examples in scripture, a parable that Jesus spoke in Matthew 13 and 24. He said, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But verse 25 said, but while men slept, 
But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was strung up and sprung up and brought forth, then appeared the tares also. Here's the danger. Here's the danger of sleeping. Because when you have sown good seed, the enemy can take advantage of you when you're not as spiritually sensitive as you once were, when you're not as aware as you have been, and he can move into your field and start sowing tears that you don't even realize have been sown there until one day you look around and you realize I've got stuff growing in my field I've got stuff growing in my life I've got stuff growing in my spirit that I didn't even know was there can I unburden my heart tonight I'm just here to try to obey the Holy Ghost I may only be preaching to one person in this house. And if I'm only preaching to one and I can wake you up, thank God for it. Thank God for it. I said thank God for it. Amen. I'm just telling you all I'm trying to do is obey the Holy Ghost in this house. Amen. While men slept, while men, the enemy's not going, he's not going to sow tears as long as you're awake. He's not going to sow tears as long as you're sensitive, sensitive and you're aware of what's going on when you're vigilant, when you are vigilant, and when you are sober, he knows better than to move in on your field. Oh, hallelujah. But when you start sleeping spiritually, when you're not praying like you used to pray, when you're not as consecrated as you used to be in your walk with God, when your devotion has slipped, the enemy takes advantage of that listless time. He takes advantage of that hour when you're not as aware as you once were. And he starts planting some seed. And one day you wake up and you think, where did that come from? Where did that response come from? Where did that attitude come from? Amen, why am I doing this? Why am I acting this way? Amen, what's going on here? And you gotta understand, tares. I said, tares cannot even be distinguished from the wheat until harvest time. Amen, I don't wanna wait, I don't wanna wait. I don't want to wait until I got a harvest and then somehow I got to go through my field and I got to get rid of the stuff that's not good and save the stuff that is good. I'd rather stay awake. Just stay awake. Stay awake. Stay sensitive. Stay prayed up. Stay worshipped up. Stay in love with the word of God. Stay in love with living for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sleep is a dangerous place to be. Hallelujah. Sleep is a very dangerous place to be. Solomon ascended the throne and he's sitting in his throne room in his very first case. His very first case that he had to deal with was a case that unfolded when people were sleeping. Amen. Two ladies came in. One's holding a live baby that's not hers. And the other one, her arms are empty. And the story is that they both had children. They both had infants. And somewhere during the course of the nighttime, one rolled over on her child and suffocated her child so that it lost its life. And whenever she saw that her child was no longer living, she looked over at the live baby in the arms of the other lady. And the Bible said she exchanged babies. She put the dead baby in the arm of the other woman and she kept the live baby to herself. And when the woman woke up the next morning, she realized that the baby she had in her arms was not the child that she went to sleep with. 
Amen. It was now a child that had lost its life. And then she realized what happened. And listen to what she said. Her testimony when she stood before Solomon talking about the other lady. She said, she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me. Listen, while your handmaid slept, while your handmaid slept, she took my son and laid it in her bosom and she laid her dead child in my bosom. Can I tell you saints of God that when we sleep spiritually the enemy can reach into our life and steal out of our life what's alive and what's, a, what's real and what's true and put something back into your arms that looks like what you used to have that my 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 hallelujah it looks like what you used to hold it looks like what you used to cuddle and love but it's not what it was because what you're holding now might look like the original but it don't have life it's dead it's gone there's nothing there I'm telling you tonight your adversary waits until you're asleep spiritually and then he trades babies with you he takes away your fiery desire to live for God. He takes away your cherished relationship. And he puts something in the heart, something in the life that it looks like the original, but it's not the original. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you'll wake up and you'll be holding a dead baby in your arms. And I, I apologize. I apologize tonight. If there's anyone in this house that's had the unfortunate experience of losing an infant, please forgive me. I don't want to bring back any hard, strong, harsh memories. But I just got to preach. I've got to preach what I feel in the Holy Ghost. Amen. But whenever you wake up and you realize this is not what I used to have. This is not what it once was. This is not the way it used to be. It used to breathe. Amen. I used to, I used to, I used to hold it close. I used to love on it. It was just my cherished prized possession. You say, but but really, really, do you really? Yeah, I got more Bible for you. Because the Bible tells us that Saul went down to the witch of Endor, and when he left the witch of Endor's house, after involving himself in spiritism, amen, and calling up the dead, he walks away from there, and the Bible said that he prophesied as before. And what that verse actually is saying is that it's not that he prophesied like he did the first time when the Spirit of God came upon him. But when you look at the original, what it's actually saying is that he prophesied. And it looked like the first time. It sounded like the first time. But it wasn't the same. It was now with the spirit, a man of divination. It was a familiar spirit by which he was prophesying. Hallelujah. It used to be. It looked like what he once had. And the most dangerous thing that you and I can have happen to us is that somehow we move from being moved on by God to reaching the place where that we've entered into a delusion and now we're prophesying, we're talking in tongues, but it's not by the Spirit. I've watched people walk back in the sanctuary that have been gone and they look like the world. They act like the world. They dress like the world. But they want to come back and flaunt it in the face of the church. And they throw their hands up in the middle of a Holy Ghost service. And they start talking in tongues. And you can feel it. Amen. It sounded like what they did when they used to dance around the altar. But it's not what it once was. Amen. It's now by the spirit. Amen. Of the devil. It is now by a familiar spirit. They're not operating in the Holy Ghost. And I don't know how you feel tonight in your spirit but the last thing I want is the devil to come along and trade out with me I refuse you hear me that's why I'm staying awake that's why I'm going to stay awake that's why I'm going to stay alive in God amen amen we got to 
stay awake. We have to stay awake. We can't afford to sleep. Just give me a few more minutes. We can't afford to sleep. We cannot afford to slumber. Not in this hour. Spirits are raging. Amen. Anybody believe me tonight? We are living in a world that is going to start raving mad. Amen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It is a crazy world. We're reaching a point in the United States of America where the rule of law no longer means anything. And we're fastly approaching anarchy. Come on, church. I'm telling you, we live in a time where that things are happening like we've never seen before. What is it going on? I'll tell you what's going on. There's spirits that work out there. Hell has enlarged its mouth. The devil knows he's got but a short time. And the last thing the church can afford forward to do is go to sleep we gotta be awake oh god it's not too much trouble for me i'm gonna get back up and put my coat on i'm gonna get back up and put my shoes on we're gonna have revival we're gonna see the glory we're gonna see the glory We're going to see the glory. We're going to see God do a great work. I want this younger generation to understand it ain't over. I said, it's not over. I don't care what anybody tells you, it's not over. This, my, 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 hallelujah. The same God that helped get this church started, however many years ago it was, 60 years ago, the same God that brought this thing into existence is the same God that's in this house tonight and the same power, the same power that delivered people from the bondage of sin can still do it tonight, can still do it tonight. I could talk about other things. There's so much I could talk about. I could talk about five foolish and five wise. Amen. So I could talk about five wise and five foolish. Virgins, virgins, you hear me? Virgins. They were pure. They were virtuous. They were holy. They were separated. Amen. What was the difference between the two? Five had oil and five had no oil. What kept the five foolish out when the call of the bridegroom came? You know what kept them out? It wasn't the fact of whether they were living right or not. They were living right. They had, they had the standards right. They had the guidelines right. You know what their problem was? They didn't have any oil. They had no oil. And that is what excluded them. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm just, if you'll take right now, just for just a moment, I want you to extract out of the equation that that was, it was the call of the bridegroom. I want you to think in terms of this that when they woke up when they awakened when the cry went forth when they woke up amen they realized that there was a situation facing them that demanded oil and they didn't have any oil amen There was a circumstance that arose. Forget the fact the bridegroom cried. Just see it in the light of the fact that in order for them to go from where they were to where they were being called to be, it demanded oil. And ever now and then, you're going to wake up. You're going to wake up. And you're going to find yourself in a situation where that you've got to have oil. You've got to have the Holy Ghost to help you. That your standards are not going to help you. Your guidelines are not going to help you. You know why the five went in? Because they had the guidelines, the standards right, and they had the oil. They had the Holy Ghost, and they had the guidelines right. Amen. That's why they could meet the situation. That's why they could respond. It's because they had it right. I don't care what everybody else is doing. It doesn't mean that you and I have to do what everybody else is doing. Hallelujah. 
because we live in a time that's going to demand some Holy Ghost, but it's also going to demand separation. It's going to demand the glory in the separated place. It's going to demand the power of God working among folks uh, that believe in living right, that believe in dressing right, that believe, my, 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 hallelujah. I thought I was preaching to an apostolic church. Hallelujah. Amen. The world we live in. I said the world we live in. They don't want to go to a church where everybody looks exactly like them. You start tearing down guidelines and fences, the next thing you know, you've got spirits of perversion moving in. You've got spirits of idolatry moving in. You've got spirits of adultery moving in. You've got spirits of fornication taking over. Come on, church. Amen. You can't tear down one wall of separation without losing. Uh, my, 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 hallelujah. All I'm trying to tell you is that they could respond to the hour because they had the oil and the separation. Amen. That's because, and this is the very reason why, this is the very reason why that I stand in, 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 in opposition to churches that had the standard right, but ain't got enough of the power of God in the house, amen, to do anything for God. I'm just as opposed to that as I am to those that have the Holy Ghost and think we can have more Holy Ghost if we turn to the world and we start embracing the world. I mean, I'm opposed to both because I find in scripture that what it takes is the separation and the Holy Ghost. Huh? It takes the separation and the move of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout amen. amen. It takes both. It can't be either or. They had it both. And they were able to enter in to that new dimension that was prepared for them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I feel something in the Holy Ghost here tonight. I said they were prepared to enter into that dimension that was prepared for them, that they were invited to because they had it right. They had it right. They had the separation and they had the oil. Amen. While they slept, while they slumbered, there was a cry went out. And when they woke up, somebody had the oil. I don't want to be on that, I don't want to be in that group. That when they wake up and they're faced with something that needs the Holy Ghost to face it with. That the only thing I got to be able to say is, well, I got my sleeve length right, I got my slacks length right, I got my hair cut right. Hey, Amen, I got my standards right. I ought to be able to take care of this situation. There's some things the standards are not gonna handle by itself. Are you hearing me? By itself, it's not gonna handle it. It ain't gonna do it. But you gotta have it along with the Holy Ghost. If you're really gonna enter into that dimension, if you're really, my, 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 I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fool right around and preach a whole new sermon right here. Hey, Amen, honey, take some notes right here. I think I'm gonna preach this later, hallelujah. Hey, Amen, you can only enter into that next dimension if you're willing, if you're willing to abide by the guidelines of the word of God and yet have the Holy Ghost, have the power of God. I'm gonna tell you, you can't substitute one for the other. You gotta have them both. You gotta have them both. I don't want to be indifferent. Sleep can be described as a state of indifference. It really doesn't matter whether I go to church or not. It doesn't matter if I pray. It doesn't matter if I worship. Amen. Getting into a state of indifference on the road to glory is akin to, to you sleeping outside on a snowy night. Amen. When the snow moves in and a man's caught in a blizzard, 
the, from what I understand, the temptation is to lay down because of the cold and to get indifferent. The problem is if you lay down when it's snowing, when it's cold, you might never rise again. Can I get a witness? And if you lay down when you're cold in the Holy Ghost, you may never get up again. Oh, hallelujah. You gotta keep walking. I'm struggling, but I'm gonna keep walking. I'm having a tough time with it, but I'm gonna keep walking. I don't feel the heat I used to feel. It's cold, but I'm gonna keep walking. I can't lay down. I can't go to sleep. I can't stop now. I gotta keep walking. I gotta generate enough heat till I can get someplace where that I can survive, that I can live. Sleep's not just a state of indifference, but sleep is a state of inaction. It's when there's no productivity. We can't, we can't stop. We gotta be about our father's business. Amen. You see, when someone ceases to worship, when someone ceases to praise, when someone ceases to reach out to others, when someone ceases to come to church, you're asleep. You're in a state of inaction. Amen. I raised three and brought them to their terrible twos. And I watched nine grandchildren come through their terrible twos. Amen. And you know what a two-year-old does <clears throat> when they're fighting sleep? When a two-year-old's fighting sleep, they bounce off the furniture. They're jumping from one piece of furniture to another. They're walking on the back of the furniture. They're chattering 90 miles an hour. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Two-year-old, I mean, they're fighting sleep for all they're worth. But you know what they're doing? They're fighting sleep. That's why when I come to church, I'm going to be moving. I said, I'm moving. That's why I clap my hands when I come to church. That's why I leap for joy when I come to church. That's why I dance a little when I come to church. I want the devil to know I'm not asleep. I'm not asleep. You're not planting some stuff in my field. You're not gonna trade babies with me. Oh, come on now. My oil is not gonna run out. Woo, ha, 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 ha. Lord, I feel some Holy Ghost. I feel some Holy Ghost. I wish somebody, I wish somebody in this house would just get out in the middle of the aisle and say, hey, devil, you're not gonna put me to sleep. You're not gonna put me to sleep. You're not gonna get me to be indifferent. What are you doing? I'm fighting sleep. What are you doing? I'm fighting sleep. <laughs> Come on, that's it, young people. Come on, teenagers, get up here. Hallelujah, get on up here, young ladies. Come on up here, young men. Somebody find your place. Start dancing a little bit before the Lord. Somebody needs to tell the devil, you're not gonna put me to sleep. I'm not dying. You're not gonna trade babies with me. You're not gonna take away my life, baby. You're not taking away my live worship. Come on, come on, come on. Some of y'all need to act like a two-year-old here tonight. You ought to act like a two-year-old fighting, fighting sleep. You ought to get out in the aisle and say, not me. Not me, I'm not going to sleep. My heart wakes. My heart wakes. I got something inside that's awake. And as long as my heart wakes, I can get back up again. I can get back up. I can go to the door. I can answer the door. I can go find my beloved. I can get back my, 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 hallelujah.
Come on, the Holy Ghost wants to do something in this house here tonight. Have we got time? I said, have we got time for the Holy Ghost to do something? My heart wakes. My heart wakes. My heart wakes. I'm awake enough that I'm getting up from where I am. I'm getting out of my bed. I'm putting my shoes back on. I'm putting my coat back on. I'm going to have revival. I'm going to go see a move of the Spirit. I'm going to get me a breakthrough here tonight. I'm going to get me a breakthrough here tonight. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost touch me. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost change me. Come on, church. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Let's make some noise. Let's make some noise here tonight. Let's wake up some folks. Let's wake up some desire. Let's wake up some hunger. Come on, wake up some hunger. Let's wake up some hunger. Come on, 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 somebody do it, somebody reach out, somebody reach out. Come on Calvary, come on Calvary, come on Calvary, hallelujah, come on Calvary, come on, we need to wake up some hunger here tonight, we need to make up, wake up some desire here tonight, we need to wake up some desire, wake up some hunger, wake up some hunger, come on church, wake it up, I said wake it up, wake it up, wake it up, I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to have a baby to put in my arms that's not alive. You're not going to trade babies with me, devil. Come on, come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Amen. Pray with somebody. Come on, pray with somebody. Hallelujah. Pray with somebody close to you. Pray with a brother. Pray with a sister. When I'm talking about really pray, wake up. Wake up the desire. Wake up the hunger. Wake up the thirst. Wake it up. Wake it up. Wake it up. Wake it up. Hallelujah! 
to know I'm awake. You're not going to plant stuff in my field. You're not going to plant complacency. You're not going to plant lethargy. You're not going to plant a spirit of apathy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be on fire for God. I'm going to pray like I've never prayed. I'm going to worship like I've never worshipped. Hallelujah. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Hallelujah. 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 I'm coming out with the oil. I want to go to the next level. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is moving on our young people here tonight. I said the Holy Ghost is moving on some teenagers here tonight. Come on, church, let's back them up. Let's back up this next generation. Let's back up the next generation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's don't stop just yet. Let's don't stop. Somebody press on. Somebody press on. Somebody press on. right now I wish somebody would go ahead and pray on through pray to the Holy Ghost begins to pray through you pray till you feel that freshness come on I feel something sweep in this house that's it all over the house from front to back lift your voice lift your voice all over the house somebody lift your voice all over the house
Come on, let's don't let's don't let this go yet. Come on, let's don't let it go yet. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Come on, church. Don't let it go. I'm asking you, don't let this go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, don't let it go. I, I, there's something happening in the house right now. You don't know most son out of the high. I believe there's some folks that's reclaiming their lie, baby. There's some folks reclaiming their freshness in the Holy Ghost. They're, re they're reclaiming, they're reclaiming, they're reclaiming, they're reclaiming. That's it. There's young people reclaiming their touch. They're reclaiming their experience. What about it, mama? What about it, daddy? What about it, elders? Hallelujah. We may not be able to shout like they shout, but you can reach, uh, we can reach God. You can touch God. Let your faith reach out.
a foundation we pray. Praise Him. Praise Him. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Tonight, we got to right. Shake the foundation we pray. Thank you.
thing about Jesus and how he set me free. I want to leap, 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 leap all night, all night, all night, all night. When I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I want to leap. Praise, 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 praise all night. Jesus and how he set me free I'm gonna praise 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 all night all night all night all night when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me when I think about Jesus and how he set me free I'm gonna dance 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 all night come on Jesus and what he's done for me when I think about Jesus and how he set me free I'm gonna dance 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 all night all night all night all night when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me when I think about Jesus and how he set me free I'm gonna leave Jesus and what he's done for me when I think about Jesus and how he set me free I wanna dance 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 all night all night all night all night when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me when I think about Jesus and how he set me free I wanna dance 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 all night 
think about Jesus and what he's done for me When I think about Jesus and how he set me free I'm gonna pray, 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 pray all night
the name above.